Very happy to welcome our next guest back to the show. Nick Morgan Moore is a fabulously mustachioed Australian comedian who you may know from his award-eligible podcasts, The Imaginary Friend Show, and Good Advice. He's also a guest in our country, so Americans, if you see Nick, be polite and try not to shoot him. We've already got a bad enough reputation with the Aussies. Nick, welcome back to the show. Oh, thank you for having me back again. I'm surprised, after some of the things that I said last time, that I haven't been banned forever. <laughs> You'd have to get at least a little worse. Uh, so now, is uh, you are in the U.S. of A. now, correct? I am. Is, I am. Is this your first trip to the Americas? It is indeed. It's uh, it's my first trip to the Americas, and I'm in the South. So, uh, but you know, like, oh, I'm from Australia. Like, I'm from Queensland, Australia. So it's like, it's basically the same. Like, the levels of racism are pretty much on par. So mm -hmm. it's, it's fine. Yeah, we don't drown many people uh, here, uh, regardless of their race. So you guys are, you guys might actually even be beating us I, out. Yeah, I think, well, I am in Alabama, so, you know. Oh, well, yeah, no, yeah, I guess. So we... it's pretty close. Right, right. So of yeah. all the wonderful, historically significant, and culturally iconic locales in America, you chose Montgomery, Alabama. Why the fuck did you do that? Uh, because I met a girl on a podcast, and we started talking, and then some, some warm, fuzzy feelings started happening, and mm -hmm. so now we're living together. A lot of bad decisions start yeah. with, I met a girl. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but um, uh, as well as uh, as coming here for her and love reasons, um, love you, Zandy. Um, uh, there's just so much work for humanists to do here. Um, so she told me about the stuff that she was putting up with here, and I was so shocked, appalled, and disgusted that I had to come and lend a hand. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I I uh, my first stand up gig in the states was a benefit for a women's health clinic. It, with, with a fabulous title, it, yes, yeah, V to Shining V, and uh, yeah, that was uh, that was a lot of fun. I killed fetuses. Oh, of course, uh, <laughs> of course, yeah, exactly. Uh, yep, that's uh, that's. Well, it, it was really to raise uh, rent money for the house that's next door to the to the clinic, so that the aunties can't rent it and then be legally as close to the pro even closer to the property. Is that uh, is that true? That's actually what it was. Yeah, that's that's what we were doing. Oh um, wow, God, yeah, Jesus, so, those are some devious fucks. Yeah, and they've tried to rent this house repeatedly, and we started renting it when it came up for rent. Oh, I say we because uh, I've I've been here for a week and a half, but they've just accepted me in as one of their own, and we're working really hard right. to uh, make things better. But uh, yeah, Operation Save America came to Montgomery, Alabama, a few months ago, and this house came up for rent about the same time. They tried to rent it. Um, so that they could be closer to the clinic and also have access around the back where the doctors and nurses and staff go in and out. Um, and as you know, uh, probably, and your listeners might know, uh, Operation Save America is one of the organizations that supported the murderer of, uh, of one of these uh, the abortion-providing doctors mm -hmm. a few years ago, and they praised uh, the actions of the killer. And so, yeah, it's not safe. It's just not safe for them to have any closer access to the uh, to the place than they currently have. They, I, I was there this week. I uh, I stood and and received uh, abuse held in my face for about five hours. And yeah, it's uh, oh, it's disgusting. They uh, the things that they said. Like I, I'm committed to nonviolence. That's mm -hmm. that's a thing uh, about me. Uh, I'm a big, scary looking guy, but I I don't. I don't engage physically. It's just not a part of my personality. And as I stood there, they screamed at me and my girlfriend that we must have been molested as children. That's why we're dead on the inside and now baby murderers and we're going to burn in hell. Boy, are you getting the genuine American experience, sir. I'll tell yeah. you what, you know, these people that go to Disney World or New York City, they don't yeah. see America. You're seeing America. That's right. And uh, I, uh, Australians didn't invent being passively aggressive. We just got really good at it. So uh, I, I, the tactic that I was taking, and they were just saying the most awful things to people, just mm -hmm. all day long, you know, screaming at people that they were murderers. A couple walked in, uh, you know, with a with a small child. So obviously they're a small family that don't have the whatever reason they're having an abortion is their own reason, but probably they can't afford to have another kid. Right. And he's screaming at them, "Don't you let them kill that little baby that you're holding, because they kill babies in there. I bet they want to kill that baby too." And uh, yeah, these these people they film they film women going into the clinic so they can shame them online that's wow that's, and it's so unsafe like what if one of these women is in an abusive relationship and their abuser sees that and then kills them i mean for fuck's sake 
So we get out there with uh, rainbow umbrellas. We have as many rainbows as possible because these people are the bigot trifecta. Mm. They're, they're, they're they're frightened by rainbows. Yes, they are frightened by rainbows. Very homophobic. And when you read their literature, there's a lot of racial stuff in there. So they're the bigot trifecta: um, uh, sexist, racist, and homophobic. And uh, and so we get out there with the rainbow umbrellas and we block the cameras so that they can't get good shots. Right. On. And uh, and so that's what I was doing uh, all day. Uh, one day this week, and I'll be back again next week. And uh, yeah, I I wouldn't talk to them. And the guy who's in charge, David Day, I'll name him because he's on Twitter trying to get people to give him money to do what he does. Uh-huh. So he's putting himself out there as a public person. So name and shame. Fuck you, David Day. Uh, he's out there every day uh, hassling women on the street. And uh, And I wouldn't talk to him. And he was getting so upset. He was getting so upset. He'd go between saying awful, horrible things to my girlfriend. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, you know, throw that much at me because I'm a scary man. But mm-hmm. you know, a, a, a five foot one girl, you know, when she's standing on her own, he would just run up to her and just scream the most offensive things. And it made me question for a moment my commitment to nonviolence. But um, <laughs> yeah, well, they, they'll they'll uh, do that to you. Now, I've got to imagine that a lot of our listeners are probably thinking exactly what I'm thinking. Um, so it's going to be my next question to you. If uh, if anybody else wants to get involved in doing what you're doing, where can they go? How how can we help? Uh, well, there's a number of advocacy groups on Facebook for women's health clinics. So just search women's health clinics in your area, and if they are under attack, they'll be linked to a, a defense group. Um, there is an organization called the Vests, uh, Clinic Defenders Vests uh, group. Oh, I can't remember the name, but they send out these uh, the Vests to the volunteers because they need to be uh, very clear who is a volunteer helping the women and who is an auntie who's there putting everyone's lives in danger. And so, yeah, look up uh, women's health clinics in your area. And if there's a need, then get involved. And uh, I'll I'll tell you about some of the stuff that I'm doing. I just wanted to tell you one thing about me being super passive aggressive, right? So I, uh, they ran over to me and they were screaming at me about the Holy Spirit's going to convict you. The Holy Spirit's going to You know, uh, blah, 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 blah. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Now, don't know if you know this about me. I used to be religious. I was, uh, you know, 10 years ago uh, as a young man, as a teenager, I was in the church. I left in my very early 20s. I think I was just 20 or 21. I was like, not done with you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, But I, uh, so I know the inside track on a, a few of the ways that these people think. So they brought up the Holy Spirit and I turned to the group of, uh, group of volunteers that I was with, and I said, hey, did you guys ever hear about the time when I used to be religious and I had a vision of the Holy Spirit? And they said, no. And all of these protesters went quiet and started just watching and listening to me talking to this group. And I go, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, I was very religious, and I was filled with the Holy Spirit, and I spoke in tongues and all of that business. And, uh, and one day, I prayed to the Lord to give me a vision of the Holy Spirit, and he opened up the eyes of my heart, and I saw the Holy Spirit. And I saw what the Holy Spirit was made out of. The Holy Spirit is made out of three things. Broken promises, false hope, and ghost pedophile dicks. Because ghost pedophile dicks, like, God will let anyone into heaven as long as they're like, oh, sorry for, you know, Jesus uh, make me clean for raping all those kids. Right. And then God has to let them into heaven. Mm -hmm. But he can't let their ghost dicks in heaven because there's kids in heaven, Right. And he knows that people who repent don't really change, so he has to take their ghost dicks away. So God's taking away all of these pedophile ghost dicks, and he's got this big pile of pedophile ghost dicks that's just accumulating over time, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And he's like, what can I do with all of these pedophile ghost dicks? So he (laughs) stuffed them together using broken promises and false hope, and he built his Holy Spirit out of them, and that's his agency on earth. And that's why when you really need something, when you have a true need in your life, and you pray to the Lord to send his Holy Spirit to help you, all you really get is fucked. Amen, brother. Amen. So I'm dying to know about, like, your first impression. Now, obviously, like I said, you saw the worst of it at uh, at the... um. <laughs> At a clinic, at an abortion clinic protest, yeah. but I'm, I'm dying to get some more like your of your general impressions of the Bible Belt. Have you seen any of our like fabulously ridiculous billboards or any yeah. uh, any yep. bumper stickers that have stuck with you or anything? Oh, there's just so much dumb here. I, I like there's dumb people everywhere you go. You right, know? like there, there is, but I reckon there's just a few more here. I reckon there may be twenty percent dumber here. 
So like the dumbest person you meet is twenty percent dumber than you meet other. Pretty places. generous. I've been the, to Alabama. The regular, yeah. Like I don't know. I've met so many lovely people because uh, my girlfriend Zandy is just a wonderful, wonderful person. So she's connected with all of the liberals in the area and all of the the nice people who are fighting to make this place better. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've met such wonderful people on my trip, and I've re- I've only met a few awful rednecks, and uh, but mostly um, people, yeah, very. Uh, people are dicks here like they're dicks like they're rude dicks people are people are just rude dicks a lot like Mm -hmm. i heard people talking about southern hospitality and then i got here and i'm like why is everyone a rude dick and then i found out that's like you guys don't get paid to go to work like you go to work and instead of getting work instead of getting a paycheck at the end of the week that you can spend on like rent and power and food your boss just punches you in the mouth and then screams at you fuck you you don't deserve a living wage (laughs) So, like, of course people are going to be upset. So one of the things... We call that capitalism, sir. We have a name for that here. One of the things that I've been doing since I got here is just... uh, I go into shops, and I'm just as pleasant, and uh, and I'm very foreign, you know, because I'm an Australian. They don't understand anything that I say. And I am a very clearly spoken Australian, like, compared to some of the people back home. So they understand me, but they know, whoa, this guy's from far away. And I just be charming, and I make people laugh, and that's like my little gift to the world while I'm here. I'm just going around entertaining people, and I'm um, having a lot of fun. And then, yeah, a couple times a week, there's uh, important things for me to go and get involved with, going down to the uh, to the women's health clinic and and sheltering people as best I can. Now, have, has any of them asked you if you're from England yet? Because I, I know me some Alabamans. If it hasn't <laughs> happened yet, it's going to. Uh, no, no, people mostly recognize the Australian accent. I, uh, I thank Paul Hogan for that, or maybe I, I shouldn't thank No, no, that. probably not. Um, <laughs> oh, he was funny, not in Crocodile Dundee and not in any of his movies, but, like, I, I heard that he ran into a guy at a party once, and he was funny, so... Oh, right on, that must have been how he got uh, that gig. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but no, pe- people understand that I'm an Australian, and, uh, like, I've got crazy animal stories from home, because I lived in the country. Right. So... So when people are like, oh, is, is everything trying to kill you? And I'm like, well, you know, like I, I've, I've been less than a meter from the second most deadly snake in the world. And it looked at me and I looked at him and I was like, let's just respect each other's personal space. And then we went in our opposite directions. Like that's that's the thing that happened to me last year. You know, like these things happen. That's pretty uh, badass. Yeah. Well, you know, the brown snake, it, usually like the brown snakes, they're terrifying because if they bite you, you're dead. But like they'll if you if you come across one and you don't kick it or or startle it, it'll just go away and you can go away. If you come across a taipan, you're fucked. Like it'll chase you down and kill you. Uh, so you know it, the fact that it was a brown snake made me happy <laughs> that uh, it wasn't a taipan. So right on, right on. So uh, in a good wildlife experience in Australia is when the horribly deadly poisonous thing that you meet isn't also aggressive. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I should tell you. Oh, I should tell you an Australian joke there, because I've been doing a few Australian jokes here. I don't usually do them in Australia because everyone's Australian, so they don't really get them. But this one, like, there is a sex move called the Australian, and that's just where like you and your partner go into the backyard and hurl racially motivated insults at each other until one of you drops dead from heat exhaustion, and then the winner gets to fuck the corpse of the loser. Well, I'm glad you shared that one. Yeah, yeah. So like that's that's a that's a little snippet of my stand up like and I I'm not saying that I agree with that. I'm just saying that that's how it is, guys. You, know? you didn't make Australia. You just came from there. So I'm also dying to know this one. Did you have by any chance like a betting pool going with anybody back home about how long you would be in America before there was a massive school shooting? <laughs> Anybody uh, get the under on that one? Oh, ouch. Yeah. Uh, when I came, people were, uh, talked a lot about gun violence because uh, it's not a thing that we have much of in Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like betting on super morbid things like that. Uh, but if I did, uh, I would have I would have been depressed at, at winning some money. Holy shit. Yeah. Fuck, well, guys. I, I find it very interesting, and obviously we're stepping way outside of the normal subject matter of, of this show, but I find it really interesting that the pro-gun advocacy, and, and obviously that you know there's nuances to this, but the more stringent pro-gun advocacy portion of the U.S. electorate completely ignores the existence of Australia. Like, as soon as like Australia existing is brought into the conversation, their entire argument falls apart. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Every time they're like, well, more guns means that if somebody was shooting it up, someone could just shoot him. 
And like the answer to the truth of that is that that just doesn't happen. That's no. just not the case. No, that's just that's movie bullshit. No, it is exactly right. You know, more guns equals less safety. That's it. You know, uh, mm -hmm. the the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is if the bad guy can't get a gun, right? right. A good or guy bullets. With a gun, yeah, exactly. Like, there's still at least one dead person. An open carry laws. Oh my fucking god. So right, like you don't know. Someone's walking down the street with an assault rifle on their back with you know every right to do that. You don't know whether that's a good guy or a bad guy until he's murdered ten children. Right. Right? Yeah. Holy fuck. Again. You know, best case scenario is someone's armed and they kill him after he killed five children. That's still six dead bodies on the street. If 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 this happened, like if they took the guns away like they did in Australia, they did a gun buyback scheme and because of you know national tragedies, people were like, yeah, that's pretty fucked. Have our guns. Um, you know, if if they did that, what would the news headlines read? You know, man goes on punching screen at community college. Twenty people bruised. You know, <laughs> right. like like horrible shit still happens. There's still stabbings. There's still there's still you know uh, some people can still occasionally get their hands on guns. But the pe the argument that I keep seeing is, oh, if you take the guns away from law-abiding people, only criminals will have guns. You know why criminals don't have guns in Australia? Pretty hard to come by, I would imagine. So hard to come by, and so expensive. Right. Like if you if you want to get a handgun so that you can walk into a Seven Eleven and shoot an Indian man and take ten dollars out of the till, right? That gun is going to cost you upwards of twenty five thousand dollars in Australia. Wow. Here you can buy it for less than a grand, five hundred bucks. You can pick up a Glock. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Holy, holy fuck. Brand new too. Yeah. 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 And in Australia, yeah. If you're if you're trying to find a firearm, it's extremely difficult, prohibitively expensive, and if you get caught with it, you fucking go to jail. You're not allowed to have a gun, you idiot. Yeah. Like, that's just it. Yeah. And, it, and you know what? We stopped that, and the mass shooting stopped. There, there has been a couple incidents since then, um, but that's like, they're, they're the exception, not the rule. They don't happen 40 times in the year 2015. Right. Yeah, I think you know? we're doing better than a, a mass shooting a week. Exactly. Year. There was a there was a siege in Melbourne last year where a, an armed gunman went into a, a chocolate shop and uh, shot a number of people. And, and it turns out uh, and like, again, like gun violence is just so fucked and like this it could happen anywhere. And it's it's tragic. But when the police stormed the place and killed him, one of the hostages was killed by police gunfire, not the gunman's gunfire. So like I'm very opposed to guns even when the police have them. I mean, they need them for when a crazy person gets their hands on something somehow, but it's still just fucking tragic all around. And that is trained professionals who have studied and trained at being a hero, right? right? right. Not an untrained person just standing on the side of the street. While, while, I, was, while I got in Alabama, one of the news stories that I heard was of a man who was being carjacked and a good guy with a gun in quotation marks, decided to step in and save him by shooting him in the head while his attackers fled. Really? Yes. They... That is a thing that happened here while I was here. Again, very, very American. Well, I'm glad you're getting the American experience. Like yeah. I said, way too many people come in and out and think that this whole fucking place is like Disneyland. Uh -huh. No, it's much more like a, a fucking abortion clinic protest. Uh, well, I, I want to thank you for the work you're doing, sir, and I want to thank you for somehow managing to keep your sense of humor despite it all. Of course, if you'd like to hear more from Nick, you can check him out on the Imaginary Friend Show, Dot Com Podcast with Jake Farr Wharton, or his new show, Good Advice or Atheist Apocalypse. You'll find all of that linked on the show notes for this episode, and if you're in the right place at the right time, you might even be able to see him live. Again, we'll have some information on that on the website as and, well. And check my YouTube channel. I'll be putting up some uh, clinic defense videos on my YouTube channel, Nick Morgan Moore. Uh, and uh, also search the phrase Jesus Choice. Uh, so hopefully starting next week, uh, when I get out there to defend the clinic, I'll be using some blasphemy as well. And I'll be dressed up as Jesus Choice, protecting women's, uh, you know, uh, bringing the third testament of the Lord, uh, which stands for things like women's bodily autonomy and partying down. Awesome. Awesome. Well, blasphemy is, of course, our favorite weapon here on The Scathing Atheist. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot for joining us tonight, dude. And keep in mind, uh, like, New York, California, completely different. It's not all like that. No. Awesome. I look forward to visiting soon. Awesome, man.